taking to doing this the past few weeks, and I don't know if it, if you like it, I like it. So I'm going to ask you to do it again. So I'm going to ask you to breathe with me. Just take it a breath. Anybody who knows me knows that patience is not my strong suit. I freely admit to being an instant gratification person. I want what I want when I want it. Anybody else cop to it? Oh, only about a third of you. Okay, that's actually pretty good. What I found through my years, however, is that being an instant gratification person, being somebody who doesn't do patience very well, I have screwed up a lot of things trying to force something to happen before it's ready, before it's fully orbed, before it's fully cooked, if you know what I mean. That includes jobs, relationships, pro uh, uh, projects, any sort of project I'm involved with. It even involves spiritual growth. Let me tell you what I mean by that. There are times in my spiritual life when I have tried to push the river to make something happen with the power of my mind. <laughs> As opposed to having the spiritual maturity to allow the thing to happen in the right time, which isn't necessarily my time. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I love this quote by Ernest Holmes. It was just so beautiful. He wrote, give time. The fruit must ripen on the tree. So it is with man's struggle toward the truth. Impatience will not speed the harvest home. Yeah? It was from the voice celestial. If anybody had you know, the very poetic work that he did. So what he's saying here, because we are a teaching that believes in setting intention. So what we're saying is absolutely set your intention. Absolutely make up your mind. Absolutely create your mental equivalent of what you want and how you want it to look. Do your treatment work. Visualize the outcome. Everything we talk about. And then allow the process to take the time that it needs for everything to come together. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. So, um, as you know, and I alluded to it a little bit earlier, uh, I often use personal experiences to illustrate uh, my point, my topic for the day. In fact, you might actually say that I am forced to have a lot of really cool life experiences. Because... <laughs> Because, you know, I use it as inspiration, so I have to go do these cool things, right? So that I can come back and share it with you. <laughs> so one such sacrifice took place recently. Come on, you guys, that was funny. <laughs> so I was in Southern California last week for American Thanksgiving, and my sisters and I went to a paint night on Mon this past Monday night. They'd never done it before. I'd done it one, more, one time before, as I shared with you earlier. And so it was quite an adventure, right? We were a little bit nervous, not knowing what to expect. So here's a picture of the three of us Aww. with our pictures. Yes, we are, we are, we are sisters three. <laughs> By the way, just this is like a great metaphysical lesson, but it's not today's metaphysical lesson. It's about how we all had the exact same ingredients for our pictures. We had the same canvas, we had the same little paper plate of paint, we had the same instruments, everything, and yet each one of our pictures ended up a little bit different. So that's another talk for another day. I'm not talking about that today. So what I want to share with you is that there were like 35 people at this event. It was absolutely packed. And there were people with varying degrees of experience and art artistry. Most people were there for the social aspect. I mean, we were certainly there for the social aspect. 
So here we are. We're sitting at these tables. We've got our little easels in front of us. We've got a little cat. How many of you have done paint night? How many are going to our paint night on Thursday night? Okay, not many. Okay, well, we're going to have fun without you. Okay. <laughs> So here's what happened. The teacher, the instructor, she gave us a couple of instructions on technique and etiquette, because there's an etiquette. They give you this little red solo cup, you know what I'm talking about, and that's your paint, that's where you mix your paint and stuff. And every time I've gone, now two whole times, they tell you over and over again, don't drink the water in the solo cup, especially if you had a couple of cocktails. You're like, oh, yeah. Okay, anyway, that wasn't me. So anyway. <laughs> So then, after she gave the instructions, what she did, she started painting, she had a blank canvas too, and she started painting the picture, and we were following along, right? So, one of the major instructions that she gave was to let the paint dry. Let the paint dry. In other words, once you have completed a particular part of the painting, leave it alone and allow the paint to dry before starting with another color or with another part of the painting. If she said it once, she said it a dozen times. She even had a, a, a song to go along with it, the Disney song, let it go, let it go. In other words, put your paintbrush down and let the paint dry. So what this told me was that there were a lot of instant gratification people. There must be a lot of us in the world. I mean, if the paint night people actually have a shtick to go along with it, lets me know that instant gratification is pretty common, right? And yet, learning patience and allowing is an essential part of achieving success, whether it be painting a painting or creating a life. Letting things be. Think about a time in your life when you absolutely could not wait for something to happen. And so you tried to force it to fit into your timing only to find out that the result was not what you had hoped for. You know what I'm talking about? There's a wonderful teaching story, story uh, about a man who found a cocoon of a butterfly. So he took it home and he wanted to watch the process. He wanted to watch the butterfly come out. Well, one day a little small opening began and he sat and he watched as the butterfly struggled for hours and hours to force its body out of this opening. And then at one point it seemed to stop and it wasn't progressing anymore and it appeared like it had gone as far as it could go. So the man, as a result of being kind, but also impatient, he wanted to see the final outcome. So he took a pair of scissors and he, and he snipped off the remaining bits of the cocoon. And the butterfly slid out easily at that point. But it had a swollen body and little shriveled wings. And the man continued to watch the butterfly because he expected that any moment the wings would expand and it would be the beautiful butterfly that could support the swollen body. But it never happened. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its short life crawling around on a swollen body and shriveled wings. And it was never able to fly. But the man, in his haste and impatience, didn't understand was that that restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the butterfly to get through the opening was the way was God's way of forcing the fluid from the body into the wings that would then allow the wings to expand expand so it could fly so without the process it was incomplete so that's a good story it's a good teaching story because I suspect all of us have done something similar. At least I have. I have tried to force an outcome. I have ended up being disappointed with the results. And yet the times that I have totally released my attachment to the outcome and I have, I have, I have trusted the process, the results have been 
have exceeded my expectations. <coughs> Edmund Burke said this, our patience will achieve more than our force. Our extra, excuse me, our patience will achieve more than our force. So let me continue with my paint knife story. You thought I forgot, didn't you? No. So here's my picture up close and personal. I don't have the original picture because I eventually did learn that I needed to let the paint dry, so I left it in California for when I go back for Christmas. And as you can plainly see, I am no artist. <laughs> Oh, I'm so embarrassed to show this to you. But anyway, unlike some people like Reverend Wesley, uh, who use shading and special coloring and shadow to nuance the picture, I don't have the ability. What you see is what you get, okay? So, after, so he, he, we're, we're doing this process, and after we had created the moon and the atmosphere going around the moon and the trees and the branches and putting the snow on the branches and painted in the animals, I have to tell you how we painted the animals. <laughs> I'm sorry. Circles, ovals, and triangles. I swear to God, the bodies are circles. The heads are ovals, and the ears are tri <laughs> triangles, and these little things, whatever, the haunches, are also ovals, and they got colored in. Okay, yes, I'm so talented. So, <laughs> so we've done all this, right? And now it's time to paint the Santa hat. And I was stoked, because it's basically a black and white picture, right? And I'm a color kind of a gal. So, I dab some red paint in my brush and I start to make my little triangle Santa hat, right? But the problem is they looked incomplete to me because it didn't have the white trim. Now, I know that I needed to be patient and I needed to w watch the paint dry on the red, but again, instant gratification. I wanted to see the final result. So I dabbed the white paint onto my brush to add the white trim onto the brim of the hat. And you know what happens when you mix white and red together, right? Yeah, yeah. So my white trim became Pepto-Bismol pink. <laughs> and I was like, dang, I knew better. I'm gonna do a talk about this. I know better. I should have waited. Anybody? I should have waited. So then what did I do? I added more white paint. Which changed the color slightly, but mostly just made a mess of things. So because, of, and in fact, the reason that I can't show you the real picture is because the darn trim was still wet the next day when I had to fly out. That's why I had to leave it there. So because of my impatience and my inability to watch the paint drop, I ended up with a blobby pink trim on my Santa hat and only a picture of my picture to share with you. <laughs> Kierkegaard said this, patience is necessary and one cannot reap immediately where one has sown. Ooh, these are good quotes. These are good ones. So you may be wondering what's the spiritual lesson here. You know, I like to tell stories and I like to make you laugh. <coughs> but surely there's more to this than just letting the paint dry. Although that in itself is a good lesson. So see if this sounds familiar to any of you. You get an idea you make a plan, you set your intention, you dream your dream, you make your vision board, you pray your prayer, and then you think you have to make it happen, that you somehow have to figure it all out. Anybody else cop to that besides me? Okay. So instead of keeping your mind focused on what it is that you want and creating that mental picture, you're spending all of your time trying to figure out how to bring it about. 
But the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, the how is not your business. The how something comes about is not your business. Yes, you need to take action when it's appropriate, but so many of us think that we have to do it all, that we have to make it happen. And we forget that we are in partnership with the all and everything, the wisdom of everything, the wisdom of the universe. So as a result, we don't allow the time that it takes for everything to come together in synchronicity and serendipity. So we end up with a swollen butterfly with shriveled wings or pink trim on our Santa hat. Brian Adams, not the singer, the author. He's Canadian, by the way. Did you all know that? Yeah. Brian Adams? The singer, not the, not the author. He said, learn the art of patience. Apply discipline to your thoughts when they become anxious over the outcome of a goal. Of a goal. I'm going to start over again, because I was thinking about Brian Adams. Learn the art of patience. Apply discipline to your thoughts when they become anxious over the outcome of a goal. Impatience breeds anxiety, fear, discouragement, and failure. Patience creates confidence, decisiveness, and a rational outlook, which eventually leads to success. Patience. Everybody taking a deep breath. Because spiritually mature people understand that there is balance between action and patience between moving your feet and allowing time, between sowing the seed and reaping the harvest. That's one of the analogies that we use in our Science of Mind classes. Did I mention we have classes that are starting in February or January? Because this is a basic of our teaching. We use our prayer, we use our intention, and it's like planting the seed into the firm soil of the universal mind. And then trusting enough to allow nature to take its course in bringing about the plant of our desire. But if in our impatience or our inexperience we keep digging up the seed to see if it's sprouted, to see what it's doing, we disrupt the plant's process. Yet, if we have planted the seed correctly, and I'm talking about our mental seed, so I'm talking about our correct thinking. If we have planted it in that fertile soil of universal mind, we can trust that the process is taking place even though we can't see it at the time. We come to that place of trust, just like Reverend Monica's Beautiful reading today. We come to that place of trust. Emerson wrote, Adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience. So this is sort of a two-parter today. We're going to continue the theme next week because I'm going to be sharing with you the incredible process that we have gone through in selling our building and potentially or hopefully buying another building soon. Because it is an amazing story of intention, isn't it, Graham? An amazing story of intention and patience and then wild activity and mostly trust. So we're going to share that story with you next week. I hope that you're going to be here for the talk and then stay for the special meeting because everything's going to, it's going to start to tie together. Hey, trust me on that. So what I thought we would do is, uh, John, are you back there? Yeah. Back there? Uh, I'm going to ask John to uh, come and noodle a little bit on the piano. We're going to do a uh, brief guided meditation to experience 
the sense of peace and peace of mind that comes while watching paint dry. So if you would, you know the drill. Get yourself relaxed. Feet on the floor. Begin to put your focus on your breathing. And allow everything to soften. For the next few moments, there's nothing you need to be doing. Know where you need to be. Just allow a sense of peace and calm to begin to wash over. Imagine now an intention that you have made or a goal that you've set for yourself. Allow yourself to really allow your imagination to see and experience the mental picture, the feeling nature of this goal or this intention. Add color, add detail, Allow yourself to have that feeling tone, that feeling nature. <laughs> See yourself living in that intention, achieving that goal, <coughs> and to make it real. Now imagine planting that fully orbed seed idea into the fertile soil of universal mind. Plant it deep down and cover it up with that life-giving, life-sustaining substance, that deep, rich, fertile soil. Add some water to it. That's the action that you're taking. Add some water to it. And now stand up and walk away. Trust that nature, combined with the soil and your well-developed seed idea, are working together in absolute harmony to bring it to fruition. You know there is no need to uncover the seed to see what's happening. You now allow the process to unfold in perfect timing. Take in a deep breath and feel the sense of peace and peace of mind wash over you as you trust universal mind in partnership with you. Knows what it's doing. You can let go of the hurry the attachment, the anxiety, if and when you have the urge to uncover the seed or to paint the canvas too soon, just remember to breathe, to trust, and to watch the paint dry. Because your masterpiece awaits. When you're ready, begin to come back to the room. 
to become aware of your surroundings. Feeling a sense of peace. And when you're ready, open your eyes. And to be here. Charles sing again, don't you?